now to the KLIF newsroom, Glenn Duncan. KLIF News continues its coverage of the nation's tragedy at the moment. We're awaiting the transfer of Lee Harvey Oswald from the Dallas City Jail to the Dallas County Jail. KLIF Gary DeLong is on the scene. Gary? Uh, we are waiting here in the basement of the City Hall, and they have just told us that we're going to have to leave this area. Uh, several newsmen are gathered outside, and a cordon of policemen has been garnered to protect the exit of accused assassin D. Harvey Oswald. So we're going to have to leave this area. They told us we cannot stay here. We will have uh, further reports as soon as they are available and as soon as Oswald is whisked away to the Dallas County Jail. This is Gary Thorne reporting for Cliff News. KLIF News continues its coverage of the nation's tragedy. Stay tuned. <laughs> This morning, received from different establishments and schools around the Dallas area. The, uh, the uh, South Oakland Woodrow Wilson Championship game will be delayed and played on Tuesday night. The schools are going to be closed tomorrow. There are other schools closed, and then here in Richardson, here in Dallas, and Rowlett, and Rockwell. Uh, further information the Sunset Homecoming Dance has been called off, according to H.S. Uh, Griffin, the uh, principal. The Combined American Insurance Company is going to be closed on Monday. The Continental Insurance Company will be closed Monday. Further information as we receive it at KLIF. All the Shady Grove schools will be closed also on Monday. Goodwill Industries, the shop and stores will be closed on Monday. The uh, postal clerks who work Sunday will also work on Monday. No other clerks are to report Monday. And no letter carriers on Monday. Postmaster Hudson says all Dallas postal stations will be closed on Monday. No service except special delivery and collection of mail from the letter boxes. We'll have more information for you on the closings for tomorrow, National Morning for the Death of President Kennedy. KLIF continues its coverage of the nation's tragedy. 19 minutes after 11 o'clock, it's 48 degrees in Dallas. in the KLIF newsroom, unconfirmed reports at the moment indicate the strong possibility that Lee Harvey Oswald may have been gunned down, may have been shot by what uh, is unofficially reported to be a small elderly man with a small revolver. Uh, these are unofficial reports. We have not heard anything official yet, but unofficial word indicates that 
somehow in the movement from the Dallas County Jail to the Dallas County Jail, probably in the City Hall building, Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, has himself been shot. This is unconfirmed. There are reports of one shot ringing out. The scene right now is one of utter confusion. We're awaiting official word within moments. Stay tuned. in the KLIF newsroom, again, from the city hall, apparently, as the movement of Lee Harvey Oswald was initiated from the city jail to the Dallas County Jail, someone was shot. It appears that Lee Harvey Oswald himself has been injured. How badly, we don't know, or we are not. It has not been officially confirmed that Oswald was shot. Someone was injured. Exists the, man that did the, exists the man that did the firing was a small, elderly man with a small caliber revolver. This is one unofficial but eyewitness description from the scene. It appears at this moment, Oswald has been injured, apparently shot, while he was being transferred from the city to the county jail. We hope to have official word within moments. Stay tuned. in the KLIF newsroom, pandemonium at the city jail right now. Apparently, Lee Harvey Oswald has been shot. Apparently, while being moved from the city jail to the Dallas County Jail, no official word yet. An eyewitness at the scene says unofficially that a small elderly man has taken a shot at Oswald, apparently been hit, an ambulance has been moved in. We're awaiting confirmation as to how many are wounded and who was wounded and the exact details should be forthcoming within moments. Once again, Lee Harvey Oswald, accused assassin of President Kennedy from reliable sources, has been shot. At least one person has been shot at the Dallas City Jail as Oswald was being moved to the county jail. Stay tuned. Glenn Duncan in the KLIF newsroom, we have word from an eyewitness at the scene who just told me that Lee Harvey Oswald has been shot. He is now reported to be in an O'Neill ambulance rushing to one of the area hospitals and shot in the right side of the face. An eyewitness uh, seconds ago described to me the scene as Lee Harvey Oswald was loaded into an O'Neill ambulance. He said he was apparently shot was by a man who had perhaps just had himself as a detective or secret service agent. This is unconfirmed, but it now appears definite that Lee Harvey Oswald, accused assassin of President Kennedy, was shot in probably the right side of the face as he was leaving the city jail under heavy police escort and a transfer to the Dallas County Jail. Stay tuned. This is Glenn Duncan in the KLIF newsroom. An eyewitness on the scene, a clip reporter, has said that Lee Harvey Oswald has definitely been shot. He's been rushed off to one of the area hospitals in that O'Neill ambulance. The man who is believed to have shot him has been captured by Dallas police in the area. They are scuffling with him at the moment, loading him into, uh, hustling him back into the jail, that is. Once again, Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, gunned down himself in the Dallas City Jail as he was being prepared to move to the State County Jail. Stay tuned. <laughs> This is Glenn Duncan in the KLIF newsroom. KLIF is now resuming continuous broadcast. New developments coming every moment here. Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, was gunned down in the Dallas City Jail just a...
few moments ago. He was being prepared to be taken from the city jail to the Dallas County Jail. A small elderly man has been taken into custody. The man had a small caliber revolver. The shot occurred in the basement of the city hall building as Oswald was being taken from the police booking office. The few short steps to an armored car which had been specially prepared for the move, it was a panel truck. The elderly man was grabbed by several police and rushed up to hall building, the city hall building. Very meager details at this moment. The man is described as having graying hair surrounded, uh, surrounding a bald spot. He reportedly had a white shirt on which has been ripped open or off in the scuffle with police. Oswald was blanked by a heavy guard of detectives when he was shot. It's still undetermined how it occurred. He was put on a litter holding his left side. An O'Neill ambulance had been standing by in case of emergency. It was brought up, and although Oswald was put into it, and rushed to Parkland Hospital. No confirmation on his arrival yet. The wild scene developed in the basement of the city hall. At one point, detectives and police officers trying to get the wounded tur turncoat back into the booking office jammed themselves into the doorway and couldn't move. Police Chief Jesse Curry is preparing a statement. Oswald at the time was dressed in a pair of black trousers, a tan shirt, and a black sweater. When he was shot, he made no sound. He fell to the floor, clutching his side below the rib cage. His slight assailant, as we said, with gray hair, wearing a gray suit and uh, a white shirt. It's not immediately known who he was or how he happened to even be present in the basement. Dallas police had set up stringent security measures for Oswald's transfer. Gary DeLong, were you on the scene, Gary? I believe we have some audio coming at the moment. The transfer had been announced beforehand to the public, of course, and prior to bringing Oswald to the basement, police using flashlights had searched the entire basement area. Officers with riot guns and rifles were posted throughout the basement area. Word coming. <laughs> Gary DeLong, who was on the scene at the moment, has come rushing in. He can't even talk now. Obviously coming. What, what, what happened, Gary? Grant, as uh, Oswald was being uh, escorted to an armored truck, which was about 100 feet from the scene, Suddenly, a shot rang out from right above our heads, and about this time, Oswald grabbed his stomach and slumped to the floor, and someone said, oh no, and I don't know who said it, and there was a mad scramble, and a bunch of police officers made a dash for one group of men and grabbed someone and about this time it was cordoned off and then uh, Oswald was dragged back into the ante room off the, off the checkout desk at the Dallas City Jail in the basement that's uh, Gary Porton Gary DeLong was on the scene at the time did you Gary did you get a chance to see the man did you see the man who I know who the man was that shot you know Harvey Oswald I think everybody does over there uh I don't think his name has been released, but he is a well-known Dallasite who reportedly owns a, a Dallas nightclub. He has been taken into custody, and uh, we don't know yet if this is the man or not. We are waiting to see. However, they do have this name uh, from this came in. He reportedly came in with a TV cameraman, and the shot rang out from where the cameras were were pointed toward the exit from which Oswald would would come. How many shots were there, Jerry? One shot only. Just one? Yes, one shot, and everybody started falling to the floor, and I was knocked to the ground in the mad scramble. It was pandemonium and confusion. Was anyone else wounded uh, except Oswald? Oswald was the only one that hit the floor. Where was he wounded? Did you see it here? He crushed his stomach, uh, uh, crushed his stomach, and uh, someone said he was, he was struck uh, below the heart. In the Gary, rear. Gary, we had one report that he was wounded in the right side of the face. Did you see his head? There? I did not see his head, but uh, he but did crutch his stomach. And if only one shot was fired, it would indicate that the stomach shot could be the only one. Uh, it was possible that he fell to the, to the floor and, and may have hit his head on the cement floor. He was uh, being escorted by Captain Fritz and about six other officers, one on each side, and whoever did hit him was a magnificent marksman because he crutched his stomach and uh, fell to the... Uh, and fell to the floor. And uh, 
the entire building was cordoned off, and uh, uh, after uh, just a few moments, after just a few moments, uh, the police cordoned off the entire building. No one was permitted in or out, and about this time, uh, everybody was told to get into a certain area, and uh, they did get into the area, and uh, then... As pandemonium took place, and took place and newsmen were running around as if uh, the world had ended, which indeed it seems to uh, have done on this weekend, uh, things were starting to get more of order and uh, Captain Fritz and the Secret Service agents and uh, several officers pushed the newsmen behind a restraining line and from there the uh, order was restored to more of, an, of a usual rate. Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, a self-admitted Marxist, a pro-Castroite communist, gunned down uh, today on the, at the Dallas City Jail as he was being moved to the Dallas County Jail. Uh, one man, a small, elderly, gray-haired man in custody, and a believed to be a, a local man, a local well-known man, but his name has not yet been released. Should be. KMIF is continuing its constant coverage of the this event. Gary DeLong, who was there, is here now. Newsmen on the scene. More newsmen rushing to the scene. As soon as any official word comes, we'll have it for you immediately. Police Chief Jesse Curry has indicated he will have a statement shortly. We hope to have that as soon as possible. Lee Harvey Oswald was the only one wounded. He was taken to the emergency ward at Parkland Hospital, and he is there now, according to reports. Reports from the scene say Oswald's back and forth, was back and forth, as the stretcher was shoved into the ambulance. He was clutching his stomach where he was apparently wounded. The small man who was captured by police was hustled into the prison elevator and taken upstairs, a hubbub of commotion, Police officers jamming themselves into the door so they couldn't move at one time. The nation watched this shooting today. National television networks, radio networks, KLIF, in fact, an open line to the scene when it occurred. Once again, Lee Harvey Oswald, the only person wounded in today's shooting, evidently. The accused assassin, the victim, at least wounded. The local man who was captured has been identified as a well-known Dallas nightclub operator, Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby, the small man, Police Lieutenant George Butler is identified, in his words, the man that did the shooting. That, that is the suspect. He was taken into custody immediately after the, the shooting occurred there in the Dallas City Jail. Joe, if you could stand by just for a minute, uh, we have more word from Gary Delong at Parkland Hospital. Gary Delong, we're just pulling up here at Parkland Hospital, where hundreds of sightseers are apparently coming to this area. We're talking with Captain J.M. Solomon. Captain, tell us uh, and tell the people of Dallas what not to do, sir. There's no point in any citizens coming to this area right now. We have an outer blockade and an inner blockade, a strict blockade. There's nothing in allowed within the hospital grounds except emergency vehicles and the press. That was Captain Solomon telling everybody to stay away. We are just now getting out here at the Parkland Hospital Emergency Room. We will have a condition and further reports from the hospital in just a matter of a moment. Stay tuned. We have this word from Parkland Hospital. Oswald is there. He went in with his eyes closed. He is apparently wounded in the left side. This is confirmed by everyone who was there. He was wounded in the left side. Twelve doctors are reported to be working on Oswald in the emergency room. He was wheeled into the spot <clears throat> a mere ten feet from where President Kennedy died. He's in trauma room number two. 
He appeared to be unconscious as he was breathing. And the pardon that administrative assistant Peter Gaelic said that 12 doctors are working on Oswald. They're giving him blood and fluids, and that's the same treatment that President Kennedy received when he was brought in Friday. An electrocardiograph hooked up to watch Oswald's heart act. All that's known now is that he has a single bullet hole in his left side. The main police suspect in custody now, a Dallasite, no official word from police headquarters yet as to the actual involvement of this man. One shot fired today in the basement of the Dallas City Jail. One shot added to three shots fired some 43 hours ago to further the story that is electrifying the world. KMIF's Gary DeLong at Parkland Hospital, Cliff Newsmen throughout the city. In key locations, we here at KMIF News Headquarters in downtown Dallas will coordinate and bring you reports from the key locations. The two main areas at the moment, no word from police headquarters, no word yet but expected momentarily from Parkland Hospital. Here's Joe Long. There has been a name tentatively released by Dallas police. However, it has always been KLIS policy that we do not release names until formal charges have been filed or until the police say this is now public and it is yours to use. But according to all reports we have, this is a Dallas man, supposedly a well-known Dallas man. He obviously, uh, this is the consensus of all reporters at police headquarters who were witnessing the attempted transfer of Oswald from his security cell into an armored van thanks to the Dallas Sheriff's Jail. Uh, this man who allegedly pulled the trigger that pumped the bullet into Oswald's body is a well-known Dallas man who gained entrance along with a reporter or a cameraman. This point is uh, yet to be cleared up. He was grabbed immediately, as you heard Gary DeLon, the eyewitness KLIF reporter, uh, describe to you, grabbed immediately and hustled it into an ante room in the basement of police headquarters. This is part of the records area. The I stand by Gary DeLong at Parkland Hospital. So the Lee Oswald was rushed to surgery upstairs. We do not have a condition report at this time. One report said that his color was very bad when he did arrive at the hospital. He was in visible pain. We are awaiting word to see if a press or a news announcement will be, a ma will be made from the hospital shortly. We're going upstairs now to the administrator's office to see if we can find out any more information. Again, Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, who was gunned down with one bullet this afternoon in the basement of the city hall as he was being escorted to the Dallas County Jail is in surgery. We do not yet know his condition. This is Jerry DeLon from Parkland Hospital. Get at the KLIF News headquarters here. Gary DeLong's report from Parkland Hospital. No condition yet from the accused assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, got down himself in the basement of the city jail today and now being worked frantically, worked on frantically by some 12 doctors in the Parkland Emergency Ward. Gary DeLong moving to the Administrative Assistance Office to see if late word is forthcoming. The last word we had from that was still no condition. And now back to Joe Long. As we were describing when Gary DeLong gave his uh, most immediate report from Parkland Hospital, he now is journeying up to the surgical area where Lee Oswald has been taken uh, to try to save his life from uh, this uh, another would-be assassin's bullet. The man was grabbed, the uh, apparent assailant was grabbed and hustled into an anteroom area in the basement. Oswald also was pulled back from the line of vision of the many hundreds of newsmen who had jammed the area to describe and take pictures of his transfer from the jail cell into the van and then to the Dallas County Sheriff's Jail. But the man, of course, is now being interrogated. We have a name. It is a tentative name, but KLIS policy demands withholding of that name until we can determine precisely and police give us permission to release it to the public. But to all intents and purposes, he is a well-known Dallasite. Late this morning, stepped 
hospital, the same facilities being used there now that were used in the attempt to save the life of President John Kennedy and did save the life of Texas Governor John Connolly. Dallas police have labored long, hard, wearying, almost nerve-wracking hours in trying to break down this man and trying to determine is he truly the assassin of the President of the United States. Yesterday we received the most encouraging word of all when homicide captain Will Fritz said, we have this case cinched. Then Dallas Police Chief Jesse Curry stepped forward and told KLIF newsmen, it's an airtight case. It's an airtight case. It is an airtight case. And now back to Glenn Duncan at Dallas KLIF News. Glad to get at KLIF News headquarters here. Still no word from Parkland Hospital. Cliffs Gary along on the scene there where the accused assassin of President Kennedy, Lee Harvey Oswald, being treated for gunshot wounds he himself received today in the basement of the city jail. While he was being prepared to be moved from the Dallas City Jail to the Dallas County Jail. Immediately after the O'Neill ambulance had raced off with Oswald, Police Chief Jesse Curry called for a news conference in his office. Uh, no official word forthcoming yet. Oswald was rolled up the same Parkland Hospital corridor as the president when he arrived. Reporters say his eyes was closed, his face twisted in his pressure in apparent anguish. Oswald arrived at the hospital, ironically at the same time, Mrs. John Connolly, wife of wounded Texas Governor John Connolly was making her first public statement since the governor was shot when President Kennedy was killed last Friday. The only word from Parkland yet that Oswald appeared unconscious when he was taken into surgery. A hospital official, the hospital administrative assistant Peter Gaddick, said 12 doctors are working on the accused assassin. They're giving him blood and fluid, the same treatment Mr. Kennedy received. Here's Joe Law. The name of the man who is now being held by police, the one who obviously placed the gun at the side of Lee Oswald and pulled the trigger late in Dallas this morning, is Jack Ruby, a well-known local nightclub owner and operator. The name is Jack Ruby. This is the man who stepped forward and pulled the trigger, sending a bullet into the body of Lee Oswald, the man charged with the assassination of President Kennedy and the slaying of a Dallas police officer. The man whom Dallas police said they have an airtight case against him at this time. Enough physical evidence to successfully prosecute and condemn him to death in the electric chair for this murder of President Kennedy. Police yesterday revealed photographs showing Oswald with the rifle and the pistol recovered from him when he was arrested. The rifle that snuffed out the life of the president and critically wounded Governor John Connolly. Governor Connolly now recovering satisfactorily in Parkland Hospital. And not too many beasts in his arrest, in his recovery bed. Lee Harvey Oswald is in emergency surgery. Some one dozen top dollar surgeons struggling to save his life. Save his life so that these charges may be pressed, an indictment may be handed down, and conviction be obtained in justice before the courts of Texas. But Gary DeLon, in his most dramatic and eloquent eyewitness account of the shooting, which you heard earlier, this will be rebroadcast for you momentarily. But Gary DeLon is at Parkland Hospital, hovering in the hallways outside the emergency area, talking with the police officials and the hospital administrators, trying to gain late details concerning the condition of this man, whose name now is on the lips of and in the minds of people all over the world. The man charged with the slaying of the president of the United States. Lee Harvey Oswald had been in the Dallas City Jail since shortly after the assassination of President Kennedy. He had undergone intensive questioning, but basically had received no treatment or any distance from that of other prisoners. He had been on the same diet. He was in a maximum security cell under heavy guard, of course. The interrogation was intensive. It was persistent. It was constant. And Dallas police and the Secret Service and the FBI had formed a case which yesterday, as you heard on KLIF News, was airtight. This, said Captain Will Fritz of the Dallas Homicide Division, is the man who killed President Kennedy. And it appeared the wheels of justice were well-oiled once again, and that the process of the courts 
Harvey Oswald would be taken before a grand jury Tuesday or Wednesday. An indictment perhaps would have been handed down. Then the trial, according to Dallas County District Attorney Henry Wade, would come about in mid-January. But now, all is confusion. The calendar has been changed suddenly as once again a finger has squeezed against the trigger. And the man identified as Jack Ruby, a Dallas nightclub owner and operator, has pumped a bullet into the side or stomach of Lee Oswald. He was rushed immediately, just within a matter of minutes, and on the old ambulance sped down the steep ramp deep in the bowels of the Dallas Police Department basement, picked up Oswald on a stretcher, and rushed him the highest emergency speed to Dallas Parkland Hospital. From now on, it's a matter of medical science taking over, trying to save this man's life so that he can stand before his fellow citizens and answer to the charges which have been placed against him. Joe? Yes. This is, this is Glenn talking about KLIF News Central. We've received word here that Lady Harvey Oswald is uh, in extremely critical condition. This uh, unofficial, as you have word, from Parkland Hospital, uh, in extremely critical condition, the term given to the condition of Lee Harvey Oswald. We hope to have a detailed report with a moment for KLIF's Gary DeLong. Steve Landrigan, the assistant administrator, and he had what to say, Gary. Critical condition. He is in surgery at this time. He will be in surgery for several hours. Go ahead, Gary. We have you on now. We have just talked with assistant administrator Steve Landrigan here at Parkland Hospital. Landrigan has told the press that doctor, that the doctor in charge of surgery for Lee Harvey Oswald states that Oswald is in extreme critical condition and he will remain in surgery for several hours. One newsman asked Landrigan what condition Oswald appeared to be in. Landrigan said he looked pretty bad to me when they brought him in, but of course I'm, he said I'm no doctor and I can't say it for sure. Again, he's going to be in surgery for several hours. Ironically, he was rushed to the floor down from the wing where Governor Conley is now recuperating from that, uh, the bullet that pierced his back believe fired from the rifle of Lee Harvey Oswald. Extreme critical condition, that's the word from Parkland Hospital. Oswald, now in surgery, will probably be there for several hours. This is Gary DeLong reporting from Parkland Hospital. Gary DeLong from Parkland Hospital. This is Glenn Duggan back in the KLIF studios. Uh, the word from Parkland Hospital is that Lee Harvey Oswald in extremely critical condition Slated to spend several hours in surgery. This, this is, uh, we, now, we now have a report of a reaction from Cleveland. And from Cleveland, Ohio, this is Gordon McClendon. This is the old Scotchman Gordon McClendon in Cleveland, Ohio. Here at Municipal State, a crowd of 40,000 is in a deep hush. A dim, lusterless sun over icy Lake Erie as we look out from the offices in Municipal Stadium. Tugboats and huge cranes all stop. The world in sort of a waiting as drama piles on drama. Boys, we're already, boys, we're already the source of great curiosity. Great curiosity as Dallas is throughout the world, to say the least. But now they're going to be even more so as they take the field at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland this afternoon before a crowd of some 40,000. The broadcast as a result of the, the broadcast that is over Cleveland radio stations as a result of the late news on Oswald has been canceled for the moment. Perhaps the last half of the game will be broadcast, but stations here are going to be following the latest developments in the Oswald episode, the, the, the attempted murder of Oswald. Transistor radios here at Municipal Stadium will be tuned to the developments on Oswald and to the pre President's funeral services in Washington. They are, in fact, all over the stands. Hard to believe a football game where transistor radios are all tuned throughout the stands to some other event entirely, because even though they might want to tune to the football game here in Cleveland, there is no broadcast of the same. It'll probably be the first national 
Football League game in years without any radio or television coverage, whatever, locally. And that's due to the just uh, in the last few the cancellations as a result of the Oswald uh, shooting in Dallas. People here have not seemed to grasp the fact that Oswald was indeed surrounded by evidence of evidence. Nobody here that we have talked to really understood that Oswald uh, had a great deal of evidence against him. People seem to think that the Dallas Police Department really had the wrong man, or that Oswald was being held for want of a better suspect. And, uh, of course, people closer to the scene back in Dallas know that the evidence against Oswald was tremendous. And the reaction here in Cleveland is interesting to that extent that no one here that we've talked to, taxi drivers, hotel employees, employees of the Cleveland Browns football club, the, the various people we've had an opportunity to be around since we arrived here yesterday afternoon, no one really thought that Oswald was the guilty party. Uh, curious chain of events. Here in Cleveland, 40,000 with transistor radios tuned to everything but the Cleveland Brown Dallas Cowboy football game. Pale sun, lackluster afternoon. We wait for the development. This is the old Scotchman Gordon McClendon from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. This is Glenn Duncan at police headquarters. I've just finished talking with Officer P.T. Dean of the Dallas Police Department. He told me he has talked to Jack Ruby since he was taken into custody. Dean said he spent some time with Ruby, and this is what he said Ruby said to him. Officer Dean told me that Jack Ruby admitted shooting Lee Harvey Oswald. He said he did it because he was motivated by a sense of feeling for Mrs. Jenkins and Kennedy. Officer Dean said Ruby told him he shot Oswald because he didn't want Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy to go through the ordeal, the long due processes of law. Ruby allegedly said that he did not want Mrs. Kennedy to come back here to Dallas and have to face the ordeal of a trial. Officer Dean said Ruby was rational, did not appear to be drinking, did not seem to hold any belief in that he thought he would be able to get away. I asked Officer Dean specifically, did Ruby indicate any plans for getting away, or did he seem resigned? And Officer Dean said he said nothing about trying to get away. Ruby told Dean, from what Dean told me, that he was not trying to be a hero, but merely motivated through a sense of feeling for Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy when he gunned down Lee Harvey Oswald in the basement of the Dallas City Jail today. This is Glenn Duncan at Dallas Police Headquarters. Thank you very much, Glenn Duncan from Police Headquarters. And as Glenn told you, we were speculating a moment ago as to the motive for the slaying, or not the slaying, we should say the attempted slaying of Lee Oswald, Ruby says he did it out of a sense of feeling for Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy. Very good report from police headquarters where Glenn Duncan is now stationed and is standing by with further reports as they come in. As we put all the pieces together in this latest incident that has happened here in Dallas, Lee Oswald was shot by Jack Ruby, a prominent nightclub owner here in the city of Big D. Less than 48 hours after Oswald, and we can certainly say it was Oswald because Police Chief Jesse Curry says it was who shot President Kennedy. Those events seem like eons ago, but it was only Friday afternoon, shortly after 12.30, that the President's motorcade, driving down Elm Street, reached the intersection of Elm and Houston, and a gunman, swinging an Italian-made rifle out the Sexton building, pulled down and shot President Kennedy in the, in the head, and severely wounding Governor John Connolly. And less than 48 hours later, that man himself gunned down by a nightclub owner, Jack Ruby. At Portland Hospital, doctors are working to save the life of that man, Lee Harvey Oswald. He was rushed by ambulance to Parkland Hospital this morning. He is in extremely critical condition. Surgery is being performed on a wound in Oswald's left side. If you have just received the news, here's a reconstruction of just exactly what happened. He was in the basement section of the Dallas City Hall. Jack Ruby 
leaped over a railing. He fired a pistol point blank into Oswald's side. Oswald, with his hands monocled, of course, fell slowly and without any word to the concrete floor. He clutched his left side and he writhed in agony. A swarm of police jumped Ruby and rustled him down. An ambulance had been standing by just in case of any emergency such as this, and immediately Oswald was placed on the stretcher. His head wobbled back and forth as the letter was put in the ambulance. An armored car blocked the ambulance from starting off. It had to be moved, and then finally the ambulance made its way as the police say code three, extreme emergency to Parkland Hospital. There he was placed in the same emergency room and given emergency treatment before taken to the operating room where right now team of surgeons Lee Oswald. Dr. Tom Shires, chief of surgery at Parkland, said that the accused assassin might be in surgery for at least four hours. It was an hour ago that he went in surgery. Gary DeLon standing by at Parkland Hospital. Shires, of course, as you know, was one of three doctors who operated on Governor John Connolly, himself wounded with the late president Edward Shires, who said that about 24 hours ago, that if Governor John Connolly had not turned slightly after Shires believes he heard the shot that was fired at President Kennedy, if Governor John Connolly had not turned slightly at that moment, he would be a dead man today because the bullet, instead of going immediately through his back and penetrating his heart, went through his shoulder, nicked his lung and his fifth rib, and came out the front. And that is the way it is at this moment. Lee Oswald at Parkland Hospital, where the life of President Kennedy ebbed away at 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon, where Governor John Connolly is in satisfactory condition today with bullets from Oswald's gun. And now Oswald in very critical condition with bullets from another Dallas man's gun, Jack Ruby. Gary DeLon is standing by at Parkland Hospital, as you heard us report from Steve Landrigan just a few moments ago. Steve said over the phone to us that Oswald is still in very extremely critical condition as 15 or 20 pints of blood have been poured into his body. This is KLIF. It is one minute past one o'clock. One minute past one o'clock. 48 hours and one minute since the life of President Kennedy ebbed away at Parkland Hospital. 48 hours, 1 minute, and 30 seconds. Turns the world was turned upside down on the streets of Dallas. And now we have a late report coming in. Here it is. Go. This is Glenn Duncan at police headquarters. No word yet from police chief Jesse Curry, who says he will issue a statement shortly on the shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald. In custody is Jack Ruby, Dallas nightclub owner, and... A man who showed up, George Senator, George Senator, a citizen, not, not a politician, his name is Senator. We talked to him, he said that he has lived with Ruby and known him on and off for about seven years, that uh, Ruby was shaken by the tragedy of the president's death, but did not seem to be any more shaken than uh, the normal citizen, uh, did not seem inspired by too violence, in other words. Uh, George Senator said that uh, he knew Ruby did have a gun. He assumed that he kept it at uh, his nightclub, which has been closed recently. Uh, very little forthcoming from uh, Mr. Senator. He was quickly rushed into the office where Jack Ruby himself is being questioned now. And we still await a statement from Police Chief Jesse Curry. This is Glenn Duck and Cliff News at Police Headquarters. A word from Parkland Hospital. Doctors at Parkland Hospital say that accused presidential assassin Lee Harvey Oswald's heart has stopped. They are trying to keep him alive with open heart massage. We'll repeat that. This latest from Parkland Hospital. Doctors at Parkland say that accused presidential assassin Lee Harvey Oswald's heart has stopped. They are trying to keep open alive with open heart massage. This is just 48 hours and three minutes since the life of President Kennedy ebbed away at Parkland Hospital. And now, the life of Lee Harvey Oswald seems to be ebbing away as doctors at Parkland Hospital tell us that the accused assassin's heart has stopped. They are trying to keep him alive with open heart massage. Just a little more than 48 hours ago, we reported on another type of massage as the doctor who first looked at President Kennedy when he was brought into the emergency room. He said he saw there was almost no hope, but they tried heart massage. This was not internal. This was chest massage, trying desperately to get a heartbeat from the late president, but to no avail. 
as doctors, white-faced, met with newsmen 20 minutes after the president died and described what they did to try to keep the chief executive alive. And one of those methods was to use external chest massage, trying desperately to get the heart going. But, as the doctor said later, there was no heartbeat when the president was brought into the emergency room at Parkland Hospital. And now, another desperate battle is going on, this of a slightly different kind, with doctors who know no politics try to keep every, every patient alive if they can. And now, after 48 hours ago working over Governor John Connolly and the late President Kennedy, they're working on another patient, and this is Lee Harvey Oswald, whose heart has stopped at last report. Lady Harvey Oswald's heart, the accused assassin, after taking a bullet in the side and the stomach from Jack Ruby, a nightclub owner. Well, as doctors desperately try to save Lee Harvey Oswald's life, his heart has stopped and they are, have cut his chest open evidently, according to the latest, re latest report, yes, open heart massage. They are trying, going into the chest, massaging the heart, and trying to get it beating again. Here is Joe Long. Roy, uh, it appears at this point that it will take nothing short of a miracle, medical or otherwise, for Lee Harvey Oswald to face trial or charges for the assassination of President Kennedy. Ordinarily, doctors are extremely reticent to make any such critical statements as they have made just recently at Parkland Hospital, uh, unless the situation is extremely grave. But if they say now that Lee Harvey Oswald's heart has stopped and they are administering open heart massage, it appears that the situation is more than extremely critical. Here again, we have one of the ironies of life. As Roy had described to you, it was only two days ago, at approximately the same time President Kennedy died, his moment of life after having been felled by an assassin's bullet was extremely brief, far more brief than that at this moment of the man who is charged with shooting him. And in the very same hospital where the president died and where medical science labored so diligently to resume his life, this man charged with killing him now struggles for life. It is indeed an extremely thin thread to which he clings at this moment. The game scheduled to be broadcast between uh, Cleveland and Dallas will not be heard today. KLIF has abandoned all of its regular programming to bring you constant and continuous coverage of this, the second earth-shattering event to occur in Dallas in two days' time, actually in less than 48 hours. Let's summarize for those of you who are clinging, as are people all over the world, to your radios to determine the latest events. Accused assassin Lee Harvey Oswald. He's a self-confessed communist and Castro sympathizer. He was shot down by a nightclub owner, Jack Ruby, of Dallas, in the basement of Dallas City Hall and Police Headquarters today. He has been rushed to Parkland Hospital. He is now being given open heart massage. In an emergency room at Parkland, across the corridor and 10 feet from the room where Kennedy died, only 10 feet from where the president died, this team of surgeons struggles to save the life of the man police said flatly was the assassin of the president and the slayer of the Dallas police officer. And now we are ready for a late report from Dallas Parkland Hospital here in KLIS, Gary DeLon. A late report from Central Assistant Administrator for Parkland Hospital. At uh, the latest report from the chest cavity, open the chest cavity of Lee Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, and we're doing heart massage. The medical term is a heart arrest, which does not necessarily mean the patient is dead or that the heart has completely stopped functioning, but it does mean that there is necessary uh, reason to massage the heart in order to get the blood circulating once again. So the uh, surgeons, the team of surgeons fighting to save the life of Lee Harvey Oswald here in the, emer the emergency surgical area of Parkland Hospital have opened the chest cavity of Lee Harvey Oswald and are performing internal heart massage. We will have further reports momentarily. This is Gary DeLong from Parkland Hospital. 
KLIF newsman Gary DeLorean at Parkland Hospital was an eyewitness to the shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald late this morning. Gary, along with the core uh, worldwide newsmen, radio, television, newspaper reporters, stood on the cold concrete floor of the basement of police headquarters where Oswald was to be transferred to an armored van and taken to the Dallas County Sheriff's Jail. Maximum security facilities are afforded at Dallas County Jail, and once charges had been filed, to all intents and purposes, technically and legally, Oswald became a ward of the county. It was uh, determined that he would remain at Dallas City Jail until the intensive interrogation was concluded, and until Dallas police officers determined what they did yesterday. As you heard on KLIF, and we told you, police Curry says... It appears we have an airtight case. And homicide captain Will Fritz said, this is the man who killed President Kennedy, wounded Texas Governor John Connolly, and shot down a Dallas police officer. So today was the moment of transfer. An armored van had been moved in to prevent any such incident as this, or at least to be a factor in its uh, prevention. Late yesterday evening, a small crowd gathered outside the police and additional police units were dispatched to that area for fear there would be some sort of demonstration. It never grew to the proportions where officers feared there would be a lynching attempt, perhaps. And today, only a handful, as Cliff Gary DeLon described to you, only a handful of persons and many of them teenagers, them teenagers, young perhaps just curiosity seekers, outsiders, stood out the police basement exit. It's a, long, it's a long concrete ramp. One entrance on Main Street, one entrance on Commerce Street, where police cars and paddy wagons and ambulances make their entrance and their exit. But then all of these newsmen standing downstairs as Oswald was brought down on the elevator, he was led through the hallways, past the property's room, and then suddenly Jack Ruby of Dallas stepped forward, placed his hand alongside Oswald's stomach, and fired one bullet from a pistol. And now KLIF's Glenn Duncan, one of the many KLIF newsmen stationed throughout Dallas, stands by a police report. This report. This is Bob Duncan at KLIF at police headquarters. Little Bridget, we're waiting for an official statement from Police Chief Jesse Curry. That may not be forthcoming for some time, an hour or so possibly. It's hard to tell now. Hastily commandeered officers here have been taken over. Two patrolmen stand in front. Inside, Jack Ruby, the man being held, who one police officer says has admitted shooting. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Also inside, a man named George Senator, Ruby's roommate. We talked to him before he was hustled inside. He said that he had heard that Ruby was uh, captured. He wanted to come down to see what had happened. He described Ruby as being 52 years old, said he had known him for some time, off and on for about seven years, and uh, he didn't know why he was moved uh, to such violence. He... Uh, we earlier talked to Officer P.T. Dean. Officer Dean was one of those engaged in actually laying hands on Ruby after the shot was fired. And he said that Jack Ruby had told him personally that he shot Lee Harvey Oswald out of a sense of sympathy for Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy. He wanted to circumvent the due processes of law and avoid the ordeal of a trial for the grieving Mrs. Kennedy. That is what Dallas Police Officer P.T. Bean told me Jack Ruby said to him. Since I last spoke then, I've talked to Jim Martin, a lawyer, a friend of George Senator. He said Senator was in his house this morning just after the very upset and wanted to... Uh, Martin said that Senator wanted him to come down here to police headquarters and try and help Ruby, or at least get Senator in to talk to him. Well, Senator is where he wanted to be right now. He was hustled into the office with Ruby and with police detectives. They're now questioning them, both of them. As we understand it, George Senator is not under arrest. He is not under formal arrest. He is being uh, questioned. He came down here voluntarily, by the way. A one important sideline, Jim Martin, this lawyer, described 52-year-old carousel owner Ruby as being a very emotional man. He said he was not unstable, but he was very emotion, very emotional, a man who felt deep emotion. Still waiting for a statement from Police Chief Jesse Curry. This is Glenn Duncan, KLIF. 
journalist Glenn Duncan, one of our many reporters, once again strategically stationed throughout the city. Glenn is at police headquarters. Gary DeLon hovers in the corridors of Dallas Parkland Hospital, where at this moment an important struggle for life goes on. Of course, any struggle for life is important, but this most particularly because of the critical circumstances involved in the wounding of this man, Lee Harvey Oswald. His is the name that is on the lips and in the minds of the world, as he is the person who has been charged with the assassination of President Kennedy. The latest report from Dallas Parkland Hospital, you've heard there from Gary DeLon, an eyewitness shooting in the basement of police headquarters. But the team of physicians at Parkland, and they are led by Chief Surgeon Tom Shires, they are now reporting to Gary DeLon, relaying the word to us, severe, massive injury to the abdomen and major vessel injury in Lee Harvey Oswald. His heart, a few moments ago, stopped beating. The surgeons immediately opened his chest. They are massaging the heart manually and directly in an effort to restore its beat. Uh, three minutes ago, the latest report just now coming to us from Gary DeLon. Three minutes ago, Lee Harvey Oswald was reported still alive. Chief Surgeon Dr. Tom Shires, wearing his surgical gown and laboring over the body of this man, trying to retain his life, relayed the word through an operating room nurse to KLIF newsman Gary DeLon. Three minutes ago, Lee Harvey Oswald was still alive at Dallas Parkland Hospital. The telephone and the teletype activity from KLIF reporters continues here at KLIF News as we halt all regularly scheduled programming to bring you the latest details. For those of you who might just have tuned in, for those of you who want to be totally informed, here is the official word. Lee Harvey Oswald was shot down by Lloyd Ruby, a Dallas nightclub owner and operator, as he was being transferred and transferred from Dallas City Jail to Dallas County Jail. Lee Harvey Oswald, the man who is charged with the murder of President John F. Kennedy on the streets of Dallas just slightly more than 48 hours ago. He is in surgery at Parkland Hospital, only 10 feet from the room in which President Kennedy died the Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock. 10 feet from the site of the President's expiration is where Lee Harvey Oswald is undergoing surgery at this moment. And he was at last report still alive. We are in constant open line contact with KLIF's Gary DeLon at Parkland Hospital. And here is a late report from Gary DeLon at Parkland. This is Gary DeLon at Parkland Hospital. Latest medical bulletin issued by Steve Andrew, an assistant administrator at 1.09 p.m. indicates that there is apparently an improvement in the condition of Lee Hardy Oswald as he is undergoing surgery here at the hospital. The open chest massage was at least partially successful. A pacemaker, an electronic device used to send electrical impulses to, uh, through the heart and uh, through the muscles of the heart, causing them to uh, then uh, contract and, uh, and release in an attempt to restore the correct breathing has been used. And uh, at this time, Oswald is still in surgery. He probably will be there for several more hours. But the pacemaker, this electrical Late report from Gary DeLon at Parkland Hospital as medical science labors furiously to save this man's life. Lee Harvey Oswald. A grand jury in Dallas County was to have received his case this coming Tuesday or Wednesday. Time, Dallas County District Attorney Henry Wade would seek an indictment charging him with the assassination of President Kennedy. Also, perhaps the murder of Dallas Police Officer J.D. Tippett. But now. These wheels of justice have been slowed, and if at all Lee Harvey Oswald reaches the moment of a judicial decision and decision, then it would be somewhat of a miracle, because at this moment, because his life, his life is is hanging on the brink. Hanging on the his brink. heart is now his being his beating of with an electronic weapon maker. This one of the new developments of medical science. 
There are three methods of maintaining a heart's action during extremely critical surgical conditions. One is external heart massage, the placing of the hands over the breastbone and the rhythmical pumping and pushing against the chest muscles trying to restore the heart's normal and muscular action. The other is the opening of the chest cavity and the placing of the surgeon's hands upon the heart to actually mechanically create this heartbeat. And this, the electric pacemaker, a small electrically operated device that sends electrical currents into the heart muscle in order to restore its normal rhythm of beating and pumping the necessary blood and other body fluids and maintaining life in any human being. So now, the age of machinery has taken over in the effort to maintain the life of Lee Oswald. Let's reconstruct briefly while we're awaiting our next report from Glenn Duncan, our KLIF newsman who now has been transferred to Dallas Police Headquarters where Chief Jesse Curry is expected to make a statement at any moment. And also from Gary DeLon hovering just outside the swinging doors of surgery in Dallas' monstrous Parkland Hospital. Accused assassin Lee Harvey Oswald, a 24-year-old self-confessed communist and sympathizer of Cuban communist leader Fidel Castro, was being transferred from his cell at Dallas City Jail this morning. He was to be taken to maximum security facilities at the Dallas County Jail because he now is a ward of the county. And he had been brought down on the elevator, led through the dark concrete corridors in the basement of the city jail, and was to be placed in an armored van in the basement loading area where many of the security police cars are maintained. Officers stood by, bearing their sidearms, carrying shotguns. Apparently, every precaution had been taken. But this also was the apparent fact in the visit of President Kennedy at noon, the afternoon when he was gunned down and his life was snuffed out. But, again, in less than 48 hours, we have a tragic example of how the tightest of security precautions fail. There always seems to be that small loophole. And a man, Jack Ruby, Dallas nightclub owner, stepped forward, pumped the bullet into Oswald's side and stomach. And the man fell, perhaps mortally wounded, to the cold concrete floor. This Gary DeLon was an eyewitness to the shooting. You heard his very eloquent description and the background noises of confusion only moments after the shooting occurred. KLIF has abandoned all its regular programming. The game scheduled to be broadcast between Cleveland and the Dallas Cowboys will not be heard at this time as KLIF continues its constant coverage of this vital moment in American and world history. The man charged with killing President Kennedy now himself has been shot. And doctors, perhaps even some of the same team who labored to save the life of the president, are laboring to save the life of this man. Cliff's Glenn Duncan at Dallas Police Headquarters stands by. He's ready with another report. Glenn? Glenn Duncan at Dallas Police Headquarters. Well, the scene here is one of commotion, clamor. People keep running around asking, is Oswald dead yet? Where is Ruby? Here's the way the things stack up at this moment. According to a police officer, Jack Ruby is upstairs jailed. One officer has been taken over as an investigation room. Inside, a few moments ago, went a young man, a boy, said to be a Western Union boy, and this would seem to be the case. He delivered a telegram, and no one knows just yet what it means. Uh, word has leaked out that it is a telegram congratulating someone for shooting someone whether it's Oswald for shooting President Kennedy, or as would seem more likely, but unconfirmed, Ruby for shooting Oswald. Little known right now, we're waiting for a statement from police chief Jesse Curry. Again, briefly, Jack Ruby, according to the police on PTD, earlier told us, he, has, uh, he admitted to him shooting Lee Harvey Oswald out of a deep, sense of feeling for Mrs. Dracula and Kennedy in order to spare her the ordeals of a trial. This is Glenn Duncan at police headquarters. 
And we are awaiting further word from Parkland Hospital, where Lee Harvey Oswald at last official report, and this report was given us by the chief surgeon, Dr. Tom Shires, reporting severe massive injury to the abdomen, major vessel injury, and at first, open heart a manual heart massage, open chest manual heart massage, and now Lee Harvey Oswald being kept alive, or at last report was being kept alive, a sonic pacemaker, one of the mechanical wonders of modern day medical science. This is the man who supposedly killed President John F. Kennedy, and the report we received and broadcast to you in actual voice sound from Dallas Police Chief Jesse Curry and Homicide Captain Will Fritz yesterday telling you, quote, we have an airtight case. This is the man who killed President Kennedy. And District Attorney Henry Wade saying, we have enough physical evidence to convict this man. Of course, we want more. Now, the more is the question, and the want and the need are other things. And a new report just now coming in from Parkland Hospital, Oswald is dead. Lee Harvey Oswald has died at the hands of a Dallas nightclub operator who, during the transfer of the assassin, the man accused of assassinating President Kennedy, Jack Ruby stepped forward, placed a gun to this man's side, pumped one bullet into him. He fell mortally wounded to the concrete floor at Dallas Police Headquarters. He now has died at Parkland Hospital. And the writing finger continues to write. And the pages of history turn and the spotlight shifts. And President Kennedy died only 10 feet in a room only 10 feet from the room where Oswald just has given up the ghost and has left this mortal world. So, one of the great unanswered questions in world history now hovers over the world. Was Lee Harvey Oswald the killer of President Kennedy? From his lips, we will never hear that answer, because the lips of Lee Harvey Oswald have been sealed for eternity. He is now dead. The frantic efforts of medical science failed to save this man's life. 48 hours and 25 minutes after the death of President Kennedy, Lee Harvey Oswald gave up the ghost and departed this world. 48 hours and 25 minutes, and his name many pages of history written during that time. Lee Harvey Oswald is dead at Dallas Parkland Hospital, the victim of the bullet pumped into his body by Dallas nightclub owner Jack Ruby, who already has told police officers, I did it. I did not do it for any reason other than to save Mrs. Kennedy the grief of coming to Dallas and going through the long due processes of justice and a trial for this man. I did not want to be a hero, said Ruby. This is what he told Dallas policemen. I did not want to be a hero. I did it for Jacqueline Kennedy. Lee Harvey Oswald, 24-year-old confessed communist and Castro supporter, died only seconds ago at Dallas Parkland Hospital, ladies and gentlemen. Another, another stained page in the history of Dallas and the world. This is the man whom police had labored over for many, many hours. His testimony. Together his testimony. Drawing the picture. Filling in the pieces of the puzzle to determine if he was the assassin of President Kennedy, the man who wounded Texas Governor, Governor John Connolly, the man who shot and killed Dallas Police Officer J.D. Tippett. A late report now from Parkland Hospital and Gary DeLon. At 107 this afternoon, Dr. Tom Shire said that the Harvey Oswald, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, died on an operating table here at Parkland Hospital. He said the bullet had entered below the heart, and uh, to this time we have not yet received reports of how many organs had been damaged the minute we heard the news we rushed here to a telephone to inform tips listeners again at 107 this afternoon lee harvey oswald pronounced officially dead this is gary delon from parkland hospital gary delon an eyewitness to this playing we were only a few minutes behind the presidential motorcade just as close as you possibly could be to an eyewitness of President Kennedy's assassination. But Cliff Gary DeLon, who has been at Dallas Police Headquarters these many, many hours, witnessed 
the slaying of the man accused of assassinating President Kennedy. Lee Harvey Oswald is dead, shot while being transferred from Dallas City Jail to the county jail just a few hours ago. Police are holding nightclub owner Jack Ruby in connection with the killing. Doctors had opened Oswald's chest at Parkland Hospital almost immediately after he was rushed into the emergency room, located only 10 scant feet from where President Kennedy died Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock. The surgeon's attempt at Hartmut's then an electronic device was brought into play, trying to restore the beat of this man's heart. But Oswald died on an operating table near where President Kennedy died and in the same building where Texas Governor John Connolly is recovering from bullet wounds reportedly inflicted by this same man who now has passed away. The 24-year-old Oswald, an enigma to those who were questioning him, an enigma to those who had known him when he was a child and during his early adulthood. It was a short life, 24 years, but actually so was the life of President Kennedy short. But their moments of life from the moment of injury were even shorter. So history is made again. In the minds of the most lucid fiction writers, how could such a story ever be devised? Let's hear now from Glenn Duncan, KLIF newsman at police headquarters. This is Glenn Duncan at KLIF at police headquarters. I've just come from a, a statement by police chief Jesse Curran. He told us, and it was the first time that we learned here, that Oswald is dead. He also said the man, Jack Rubenstein, as he identified him, and goes by the name of Ruby, will be formally charged with murder. This is all the chief would say. He refused to engage in any type of question or answer session. I hope to have the recording of that conference and his statement ready in just a few moments. This is Glenn Duncan at Dallas Police Headquarters. That was KLIF's Glenn Duncan at Dallas Police Headquarters, Jack Rubenstein, most popularly known as Jack Ruby, the operator of a Dallas night spot, a very popular night spot in the heart of downtown Dallas, will be charged with the murder of Lee Oswald. As we stated earlier, this man who died a few moments ago at Parkland Hospital, the accused assassin of President Kennedy, the wounder of Governor Connolly, and the slayer of a Dallas police officer, who could write such a fantastic story that in a period of 48 hours and 7 minutes, the President of the United States would be assassinated, the Governor of Texas would be wounded, a Dallas police officer attempting to arrest the accused assassin would be slain, and then the man upon whom the spotlight of the world had been shining so brilliantly and so ruthlessly these past few hours would be cut down by a local Dallas citizen, felled by one bullet during a high-security transfer procedure in the basement of Dallas Police Headquarters. He, too, would be dead in the same hospital where the President of the United States died. Apparently the victim of his mind and his high-powered rifle. Repeating, Lee Harvey Oswald is dead at Dallas Parkland Hospital, accused of slaying the President of the United States. The man whose case was to be placed before a Dallas County grand jury this coming Tuesday or Wednesday. The man who was to stand and face his peers and his citizen equals in a Dallas County courtroom by mid-January to face charges of the murder of John F. Kennedy. This is KLIF in Dallas. We have abandoned our regular programming schedule. The game to be heard between Cleveland and Dallas this afternoon will not be heard as we maintain our coverage of the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald. What fiction mind could have devised such a fantastic story? It wouldn't have been a seller. It would have been too unbelievable to be accepted by the reader. But you are not the reader. You are the witness, the ear witness to history being made again today in Dallas, Texas. The spotlight, and certainly not a welcome one, falls again on this city. Our president slain Friday afternoon, dying a violent death at Parkland Hospital at 1 p.m. on that date. 48 hours and 7 minutes later, the man accused of being his slayer, his slayer, has died on an operating table only 10 feet from where the president expired. Only the day before the president's funeral services were to be held, the day before the birthday of the president's three-year-old son, 
four days before the birthday of the president's six-year-old daughter. The ways of history and men are strange, but Lee Harvey Oswald is dead. Dr. Tom Shires, the chief surgeon at Parkland Hospital, kept relaying word through his surgical nurses to KLIS Gary DeLon outside the operating room. The man is still alive. Then the next report. We are playing this by ear. Then we are administering manual heart massage in the chest cavity. Now we are using an electronic device. And now from Dallas Police Headquarters, the statement from Police Chief Jesse Curry. My statement will be very brief. official statement from Dallas Police Chief Jesse Curry. You just now heard it directly from Dallas Police Headquarters. Jack Rubenstein, a well-known Dallas nightclub owner and operator, better known as Jack Ruby, will be charged with the murder of Lee Oswald, the 24-year-old man charged with the assassination of the President of the United States. Ruby had told a police officer whom our reporters interviewed a short time ago, I didn't want to be a hero. I did this for Jack. I did it to spare her the grief and the public exposure of possibly coming to Dallas and standing in the trial of this man. So, again, one individual, one mind, one finger, one bullet changing the course of history. The great unanswered question at this time, a monstrous question mark that will hover over Dallas and the rest of the world. Was Lee Oswald truly the assassin of the President of the United States? Dallas police, after exhaustive and intensive questioning and investigation, said he is. Flatly, they said, this is the man who killed the President. Justice of the Peace David L. Johnson told KLIF News a short time ago that Ruby was present early Saturday morning when the press was allowed to ask Lee Harvey Oswald some questions. Johnston said Ruby walked up to him in the police detail room and handed him a card. It read, I'm Jack Ruby, carousel. And Johnston said he had never met Ruby before, but Ruby told him, come by and see me sometime. Attorneys have been called in. Ruby was taken from his tight security fifth floor jail cell to interrogation a while ago. He's now been returned to the fifth floor jail cell. Four attorneys have been retained. One of them, Attorney Droby of Dallas, told KLIF News that his wife had received two threatening telephone calls since the death of Oswald at Parkland Hospital. And the calls, he says, apparently were made by the same man, says, if you defend, you're next. You're next. Groby tells us he'll defend Ruby anyway, despite these calls. Homicide Captain Wilfred, Police Chief Jesse Curry, Captain Fat Gunaway, all of these men who have been so vigorous, so intensive, so meticulous in the detail of trying to solve the assassination of the president. I've worked these many long hours, intensive interrogation of this accused slayer, Lee Oswald. And yesterday came the real break. It wasn't a signed confession. It was not even a verbal confession. But all the pieces began fitting together so closely, forming a true picture. The man's background was part of it. He was a confessed communist sympathizer. In fact, he had gone to Russia, renounced his American citizenship. He applied for Russian citizenship. And even the Russians turned him down. He'd been a Marine. His former Marine drill sergeant said he was a guy who was always lipping off at the other guys. He could never get along with anybody. But this same drill sergeant says he was a crack shot. He was an expert marksman. And if indeed Lee Oswald was the man who killed President Kennedy and wounded Governor Connolly Friday, it was proved at that time because shots fired from a great distance, high power rifle, telescopically equipped, robbed a moving target a great distance away. But Police Chief Curry and Captain Fritz, the men who had worked most 
in being early on this thing. Uh, they had had little or no relief. Curry says that Jack Ruby's real last name is Rubenstein. He, of course, goes by the name Ruby as we refer to him. He has been charged with the murder of Oswald. Curry's disappointment must be great because it was only yesterday afternoon we witnessed that first spark of enthusiasm and encouragement in his eyes and uh, heard that first lilt of satisfaction in his voice when he said, to all intents and purposes, we have an airtight case. It was earlier that Captain Will Fritz says, this case is cinched. We said, did this man kill the president? And he told us in the corridor outside the interrogation room, this is the man who killed the president of the United States. But Will Fritz said this afternoon, with a much changed tone of voice, with the death of Oswald, there is no case. The case of President Kennedy's assassination is now closed. Those are the words of homicide chief Will Fritz. Police were certain Oswald was the assassin, that he had no accomplices. Fritz says, though, we never stopped digging for evidence. It was uh, Dallas County District Attorney Henry Wade who told us only yesterday, we have sufficient physical evidence now to convict Lee Oswald of the murder of the president. He also was charged with the murder of Dallas Police Officer J.D. Tippett. And KLIF has established the J.D. Tippett Memorial Fund. This veteran officer, 39 years old, an 11-year veteran of the police force, three children, ages and three children, ages 4 through 13. He was the winner of the Dallas Police Department Meritorious Service Award, 1956 and 1957. He was on duty. He gave his life in the line of duty, but we feel that any man who gives his life under any circumstances such as these has performed beyond the call. And we ask your contributions to the J.D. Tippett Memorial Fund, KLIF 2104 Jackson Avenue. Checks or money orders, please. Regardless of the size, it will be appreciated by the widow and children. And the contributions are numerous to this time. Captain Wilfred says we've never stopped digging for evidence, but... The case of the assassination of the President of the United States closed with the death of Lee Oswald. These events are fantastic. Those of you who are hearing them, those of you who perhaps have seen some flashing glimpse of what has transpired, may realize it. But even to us, those of us who cover stories of happiness and tragedy almost daily, this story of such magnitude is just difficult to absorb at this time, and it will perhaps be many days as there are so many things yet to be done and said before we realize the full impact. KLIF, since late this morning, has canceled its regular programming schedule, scheduled to be broadcast between the Cleveland Browns and the Dallas Cowboys. Not heard, of course. Was not heard, of course, because we have been on the air continuously for several hours now. For those of you who have interest in the world of sports at this time, the final score was Cleveland at 27, Dallas 17. But the story remains here in Dallas with the death of Lee Oswald today. Here again is KLIF's Roy Nichols. It might be very interesting at this point, Joel, to recap just exactly what did happen today. A very shocked Dallas, numbed, trying to assimilate the fact that President Kennedy was assassinated on Dallas streets Friday afternoon around 12.30 and died at 1 o'clock at Parkland Hospital. Trying to assimilate that fact had still another shock today when it was learned that a bullet was fired into the side of Lee Harvey Oswald and that he died at 1.07 this afternoon at Parkland Hospital, attended by the very same doctor who attended President Kennedy on Friday. The 42-year-old striptease club owner identified by police as Jack Ruby, occupying the stage as the bizarre sequence of events unfolds. 
He bolted through a heavy police guard in the basement of the city hall as Oswald was being moved to the maximum security county jail. There, Sheriff Bill Decker was waiting. 600. A crowd of 600. Standing around, waiting to see what a man looks like that will pull the trigger and kill the President of the United States. The 600 didn't get a chance to see him. Ruby cursed our ball, held a 38 caliber pistol just inches, approximately four inches from the prisoner, and squeezed the trigger. As the bullet went into Oswald's body, his face turned ashen. He clutched at his chest and toppled slowly to the floor without saying a word. Police Tomstone Ruby, of course, and took him to a fifth floor cell. He has been charged with murder, as you heard Glenn Duncan report, from police headquarters. Oswald was rushed by ambulance to Parkland Hospital and into a room just ten feet from where President Kennedy died. KLIS Gary DeLon, keeping a vigil at Parkland Hospital, then reported that Oswald was dead. Doctors had worked on him in much the same way they tried to save the president's life on Friday. They tried to save the president's life by external chest massage. They reported shortly after one o'clock this afternoon that they had cut up on the chest of Oswald and tried massaging his heart after it had stopped, but they could not get it working again. They pronounced him dead at 1.07 this afternoon, 48 hours and 7 minutes after President Kennedy was pronounced dead. Oswald denied claiming he did not assassinate the president, but the Dallas police say they have the evidence to convict him. Their proof has never been divulged, and it may never be. Dallas Homicide Chief Will Fritt to the alleged to say after the alleged assassin's death that the Oswald case is now closed. Now Fritz has another puzzle to put together, a jigsaw puzzle. Many pieces are missing right at this moment. Some are beginning to fit in place. Some of the pieces may be lost. The assassination of President Kennedy, that case is closed. But the assassination of Lee Harvey Oswald, that case is just beginning. Oswald, gunned down, one shot from a 38 caliber pistol in the city jail. 42-year-old Jack Ruby. Jack Leon Rubenstein, his full name. He is known here in Dallas, very well known by many people, by police. As Patrolman Dean has told us this afternoon, if I had seen him, I would not have let him in. And all of this comes as the American people are paying a final homage to President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Here once again, KLIF Managing Editor Joe Long. It is 56 degrees in Dallas, under clear skies. Those skies are clear, meteorologically speaking. But as far as the cloud of dark shame and shock that hangs over the city is concerned, it is extremely dark. President Charles de Gaulle of France has arrived at Dallas Airport near Washington. His plane touched down at 4 or at 3.50 Dallas time. For the funeral of for the funeral of President Kennedy tomorrow. Those services to be broadcast live and direct from Washington on KLIF News beginning at 10.30 tomorrow morning at Dallas time. This accused assassin of President Kennedy shot and killed today by a self-appointed executioner. This 42-year-old striptease club owner, Jack Ruby, Jack Rubenstein is his real name, states this shocking sequence of events directly in front of radio microphones and television cameras. It's the first time in broadcast history this has happened. Ruby bolted through a heavy police guard. How he got into this basement, we don't know at this time. But he bolted through a heavy cordon of police officers, stepped up to Oswald, placed a gun at his side, fired that fatal bullet that tore through Oswald's vital organs. Ruby cursed as he did this. He squeezed that trigger and then came the loud report. And then the bedlam as KLIF's Gary DeLon was knocked to the concrete floor and trampled by uh, policemen and newsmen. Oswald's face immediately turned pale white. 
He grabbed at his chest and his stomach. He fell to the floor. He didn't say a word. And this is another one of those critical quirks of fate. No deathbed confession. He could never had he confessed verbally or by signature that he was the slayer of the president of the United States. Police jumped on Ruby immediately. They hustled him into an elevator, whisked him to the fifth floor. I have known to those familiar with the city jail. He was held incommunicado there. Four attorneys have been contacted to defend him. A.C. Droby, one of the attorneys, says his wife has received two threatening phone calls, one of which said, you defend Ruby and you're next. But Droby says, I'll defend him anyway. And, and for three other attorneys have been retained. Oswald was hustled into an ambulance which was there at the scene in that damp, dark basement of Dallas Police Headquarters within minutes. He was rushed to Parkland Hospital, and as he was carried in, he was writhing, his head was tossing and turning, his left leg was drawn up, he clutched at his stomach. Taken through the same door through which was taken the then dying President Kennedy Friday afternoon, taken to the same emergency facilities that tried so desperately to save the life of the, our chief executive at that time, taken to the same surgery only 10 feet from where President Kennedy died at 1 o'clock Friday afternoon, attended by many of the same physicians who had attended the late president in his death throes. Oswald's heart stopped beating, his chest was opened, manual heart massage was employed, and then electronic heart massage was employed. But he died. 48 hours and 7 minutes after the President of the United States had died. Oswald had been taken to that operating room. The doctors relayed messages constantly through their nurses to KLIF's Gary DeLon just outside the door in the corridor. Oswald had claimed he did not assassinate the president. The Dallas police told us yesterday, and you heard them say it, they had the evidence to convict him. Their proof has not been divulged. Now, they have given us hints. They've said identification of the death weapon, pictures, many other facets involved. But the reason these things are not revealed, they did not want to damage the prosecution's case. As Oswald was to have gone on trial approximately mid-January, had they revealed all of their evidence, then whatever attorney would have taken this case or would have had this case forced upon him by court appointment, then he would have had many weapons at his disposal to win perhaps some degree of acquittal for this man, even had it been just a life sentence or a plea of insanity that had been upheld. So Dallas police many times withhold these things, not because they don't want the public to know, but for the protection of their prosecution, and that is what they're charged with, the maintenance of law and order, the capture and prosecution of criminals. This proof may never be divulged. It may go with the men who know it now. Dallas Homicide Chief Will Fritz says, though, the assassination of the President of the United States is now closed with the death of Lee Oswald. That is how secure the police were in their belief that they had the man. This is the man who killed the President of the United States, is what Will Fritz told us yesterday. Jesse Curry told us, Dallas Police Chief, we have an airtight case. Dallas County District Attorney Henry Wade says we have sufficient physical evidence to convict and sentence this man for the murder of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Gary DeLon stands by at Dallas Police Headquarters with this late report. This is Gary DeLon from Dallas Police Department reporting for Chris Hughes. The latest development as Jack Leon Rubenstein, Nurse Dean, alias Jack Ruby, is being charged for the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald. Apparently, the latest development states that George Satan, the roommate of Jack Ruby, will be released. His attorney has indicated this. KLIF News talked with one of the officers who was involved in the apprehension of Ruby after he had fired the fatal shot into Oswald's abdomen. He is W.E. Chambers from the Fourth Street Division. Chris News had this interview with Chambers just moments ago.